What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Hope you're having a great week. I've already had a couple of you guys ask me what the top speed would be on the MX2000 project if I put a 13 tooth sprocket on it. So I bought one. Let's go put it on and find out. If you plan on doing this, you only need two wrenches, a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. Something to keep in mind is that this nut is threaded on there reverse thread. So to tighten it, you turn counterclockwise and to loosen it, you turn clockwise. Push down on the tensioner to reduce tension on the chain and just pull the sprocket out. And just to give you an idea on the size difference between the stock sprocket and the 13 tooth sprocket. It's noticeably larger. Now, before we take the bike out to see what the new top speed is, there are a few small things I want to clarify. As you see, the rear tire that's installed on this is significantly larger than stock. So even if you have the same motor, controller, or battery setup as me, your results might be a little different just because of the rolling diameter being slightly different. From my experience, it tends to raise the top speed about 15 to 17% coming from the stock sprocket. One downside that comes with it though, is it lowers the low end torque a little bit. So the amount of power you have coming from a stop to accelerate, it tends to make it feel just a little bit more sluggish, but the trade-off of the new top speed, I think is definitely worth it. When this bike had the fast scooters overvolt kit installed with the stock motor, my top speed was 23 miles an hour. But when I installed the 13 tooth sprocket with that combo, my new top speed was 26.8 miles an hour. So just to give you an idea, the same thing applies to all setups really. So now I'm thinking that my top speed might be close to 50 miles an hour. Could be 48, could be 51. I have no idea. So let's go take this bike out and find out. 84 volts, so we're fully charged. We've got plenty of torque down low. It definitely feels a lot more lean forward. I was a little confused why the bike wouldn't go past 44 miles an hour. Then I realized that the speed selector is actually on number two. It should have been on number one. For some reason, that's just how this switch is that came with a Kunray kit combined with this new controller. I may repin that later on, but it works just fine. We're just gonna test it on number one for now. Uh, and then another thing is 
my rear tire is actually rubbing whenever I go past 43, 44. Um, the tire expansion on top of the fact that it's a three and a half by 10. I never recommend this size. I just wanted to see if it'll fit. I already slotted the motor mounts to slide the motor forward. So there's very little clearance, but there is clearance. I'm just concerned that when I go closer to 50 miles an hour that it's going to rub heavily. So I've definitely got some corrections to do on that. But for now, let's just see how fast this thing goes. All right, let's roll. that it was just a low battery issue i actually let the bike charge overnight before we just took it out just now as you see there's nobody out there on the street that's because it's 6 a.m out here in virginia so there's definitely still something up with a bike it won't go faster than 44 and a half miles an hour which is unusual because that's the typical speed it goes the tire expansion issue could definitely be limiting the rear wheel from spinning past a certain speed but I don't think that's the scenario here because this bike's gone 47 before on the same street. So I think there is something else going on. One thing that definitely caught my eye is the voltmeter on my throttle. Before I even leave the neighborhood, the voltage drops down to like 79.4, like 150 yards away from my garage where it starts off at 84.6 volts. So that's actually what made me think that it was low charge yesterday initially. And I noticed that when I give it a lot of load on the street, it drops down to 76. So I'm definitely having some sort of inconsistency as far as power output and charge. It could have something to do with the fact that it's 44 degrees outside here in Virginia, which is why I'm wearing a sweatshirt is it's significantly colder than it was last week when we last took this out. But I would say that that's a pretty big performance change within just one week of weather change. This bike was just keeping up with some Cabos just last week and I would ride it like eight miles before the voltage drops down to 78, 79 by the time that I'm done with my ride. We're talking like two miles here and the voltage drops down to 78, 79. So there's definitely some sort of power output inconsistency going on here. So I'm gonna do some diagnosing I'm really hoping it's not another BTR power battery pack issue because I just spent a lot of money on the 72 volt pack a couple weeks ago. For now, I'm going to be hopping back on the Enduro project since I know I've got a lot of parts being delivered for it today. But if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects, consider subscribing to my channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.